Hey, it's good to have you here. Come on in, have a seat. Welcome to the Beyond Picket Fences podcast. We are your hosts, Mandy Benicky and Naomi Marquez. Hey, Mandy. Hi, Naomi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. 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 I'm caffeinated and I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm on like cup of coffee number, I don't know, 30, 30, This 40? is our dessert coffee, right? Oh, it's so good. Mm. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. I got addicted to this. Um, I'm normally like, you know, a black sludge coffee drinker. And during COVID, I don't, like for whatever reason, I'm now addicted. I know why. It's you. <laughs> well, and I- Richard and his evil ways <laughs> have got me addicted to uh, Italian cream, which is freaking amazing. Anyway, so... Here I am, super caffeinated, ready to go. <laughs> you want to have a conversation? Huh? Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> what do you want to talk about today, girl? Well, we just recorded your story last night. Oh, yeah. And um, you are very open, or were very open, and are very open, about your marriage. Yeah. And your relationship and all of for lack of a better word issues yeah that you have and so is rich and yeah. i find that to be unique and really refreshing we talked about that in the podcast mm-hmm. how people don't normally talk about those things yeah and how a lot of times that can create further problems yeah um so i want to talk about just marriage and and relationships and how to keep those going and and things we don't talk about that's great. I love that. So, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Let's go. So um, it's interesting you say that. So I remember being at my mental therapist's office and she said, Naomi, why do you think you and Richard have been together for 24 years through everything you've gone through? First and foremost, we do not bring up the past. We don't. We don't revisit it. We don't guilt the other person for the things that they've done in the past. And I didn't realize that until I was in mental therapy. And while I was in mental therapy, you didn't realize that you don't do that. Okay. Yeah. And the reason is the, my therapist, you know, said, you know, as we're never talking about you and your husband and all the issues you guys have had. Mm -hmm. And it triggered that you don't ever, I don't ever forget. And he doesn't forget, but we forgive. So the story is still there, Mm -hmm. but the feelings about that story are in the past is done. Mm-hmm. Got we for, it. We've, we've forgiven them. And I've realized in talking with men and women, when they decide that they want to um, work through things, they could be years ago things happened because they've never forgiven them. Mm-hmm. And because I think there's, you know, a fear from what I have been told, that if you forgive, it'll repeat itself. Oh, and it gives them permission to do it again or yes. gives yourself permission to do it again. And I don't know if everybody feels that way. Oh, I think it's pretty common. Yeah. Yeah. And I know for my relationship with my husband, forgive never meant forget. It was, I forgive you. I won't forget it. And I'm okay um, talking about it. Not in shaming you or making you feel bad, but letting it everybody know that this is the reality of a relationship. So Rich and I have almost been divorced three times. And each time the other person had to be okay with the changes the other person wanted in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And typically it was self-serving because Mm -hmm. we, each of us wanted to have more about us and the relationship versus the other person. And you have to be okay with the other person being an individual in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's the second piece is you have to be okay. This relationship isn't us that as individuals, we have to have our ability to be who we are and the relationship doesn't define us. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard piece for people. You and Jonathan are fantastic at that. Yeah. I think that, you know, I've talked about that before. That is something that's ingrained in who I am. And um, I think ever since I was, I can remember as a little girl, 
Um, I hold on to that piece, my identity so tightly. Um, and I don't think that's common, um, from what I see from, especially, you know, in a relationship, whether it's with a partner, um, a love, you know, a love type relationship, a romantic relationship, or the relationship with your kids as being a mother or a parent, um, or even as a coworker, you know, some people are, uh, I'm sorry, not a coworker as a, uh, an employee. Um, a lot of times people dive in and they, um, become, that is their identity. They mm-hmm. are mm-hmm. a businesswoman mm-hmm. and it consumes them. Mm-hmm. They are a mother. And so their entire life is revolves around their children mm-hmm. or their husband or, and there's, Maybe nothing wrong with that, but for me, that would crush me mm-hmm. and who I am. Mm-hmm. And so early on at our relationship, I had to make that very clear. And Jonathan is, um, if we didn't get married, I think he'd still be traveling around the world. Like he is just, you know, he's just such an individual person. Um, and he has the things he wants to do in life. He, he knows, we both know that you only have one life and, mm-hmm. Um, And neither one of us wants to stunt that for the other. And so both of us, we've, through our marriage, um, we always take time away to be ourself, away from being a mom, a dad, and being a wife. And for us, that's, it's worked. Well, and that, that's an important message, you know, as you look at the relationships that you've seen fail, friends, Mm -hmm. family, acquaintances, you hear a lot about, I was being suffocated. I couldn't, I didn't have a voice. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who I was. I couldn't be myself, male or female. Right. Right. And by allowing that individuality, you have to be okay that that person loves themselves enough. Right. And that, that's a scary message because a lot of times in a, in a marriage, the uniqueness of the marriage is the fact that you think your worth is tied to how much that other person loves you. Mm -hmm. And I think as, um, and as you look at the different relationships and I think about the ones that have failed, it's when the person decided they didn't need that other person to love them, they needed to love themselves more. Then all of a sudden the other person's like, whoa, 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 you don't love me anymore. You don't Mm -hmm. need me. Right. And they don't realize that that independence actually makes the marriage stronger. Right. And that's where a stage in our relationship, one of the times we almost got divorced, was, are we okay with the other person having that independence? Because our relationship wasn't based on that prior. Mm -hmm. And we both had to say, okay. And we were fine with it. Right. Well, and I think a lot of times, obviously, we are human. We're animals. Like, we, we mature and we grow through life. And... A lot of times we'll get to a point or we hear of people who get to a point and they're like, you're not the person that I once knew. Um, They grow apart. You aren't the same person that I fell in love with. Um, And I think you have to realize that, you know, we, we all change and maybe sometimes those paths need to, to part. Um, But it's also your responsibility to if you want to continue that relationship with that person to give them the space to, to change and grow and become more and become, you know, who they're supposed to be. Um, because for us, like we're so different from who we were back in our twenties and thirties, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and those were really good memories. Um, and we're definitely not, like back in our thirties, you know, we partied like crazy. Um, and those are really good memories and fun times. And sometimes like, you're like, gosh, I wish we could go back and do that again. I wish we could have that feeling that we had when we were like that. But like you said earlier, those memories, it's okay to have those, but, and it's also okay to be done with that and to move on to something else. I absolutely agree with you. I, you know, I, I was thinking about, so my first marriage, I've gone through a divorce and we couldn't work through the issues that we had. There was a lot of substance and fig, physical issues that we couldn't just work through. So there are times in a marriage that you have to say goodbye, mm-hmm. right? You said that 
you have to part ways. I think that, you know, to really sit on a point that you made is when do you, when do you want to continue, right? You don't want to step away. You don't want to walk away. You want to make the marriage work. There's, there's, there is an abuse in there that you can't work through. And it's not looking at the past saying we once were. And that is something that we don't do either. We had great sex life. We've always had an amazing sex life. It's not so amazing right now. Do I go back all the time and, and wish and look back on those days? I can't because if I did, it's going to make today seem less than it was before. Our marriage is just different now. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you look at your glory days, when, you know, we, um, and I'm a very sexual person. And, um, so for me, it was that passion that we have and that lust and that drive. And that was a huge component of our life. Mm -hmm. And then since I got cancer and things have changed and my vagina's changed and I can't have that same sex life anymore. Um, I've had to be okay with letting that go. And we, and I, and I hear people talk about, you know, their, their glory days in a relationship. My God, we've been together 24 years. How many glory days can you have at <laughs> some point? It can't always be at freaking level 10 all the time. Right. right. And I, you look at what 10 looks like now, you know what 10 looks like now for me, he, this man took care of me every day when I had cancer and did not look at all at me since then as less of a wife because I cannot give him the sex that he needs. I can't give him the the passion that we used to have. And I look at that. That's a 10 to me. Mm -hmm. That's a 10. I will take that all day long. Mm -hmm. And I think that as you grow in a marriage, like I look at your marriage with Jonathan. I look at him and him being so confident as a man that he allows you to be Mandy every day. That's a fucking 10. That's a 10. <laughs> and we, it's, it's what is a 10 right now? And it's, it, it, to me, a 10 is that my husband during COVID with the grandkids and, you know, having his own company and the struggles he has taken on, you know, making me lunch every day and watching the kids and picking up grandkids up from school and helping them. That's a 10 helping mm -hmm. them with school. That's a 10. Well, and these are, these are glory day memories that yeah. you're making, right? Mm -hmm. Like to, and these are, this is that that's a level of a relationship that a lot of people won't ever mm -hmm. attain, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, I think, you know, if, if we're looking at the reality of marriage, it's being okay talking about that you can still love each other and not be completely happy with that person. Mm -hmm. And it is okay not being okay with actions and things that they've done and being okay that you're angry with somebody and making it a reality that... I'm not always going to love everything that Rich does and I'm not always going to be okay with everything and every decision he makes, but I want to talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. I want to be okay with the, you know, if I flip out one day and cause Naomi does and I'll get super angry and he will wait till I'm done and then we'll talk about it and He's been dealing with that for 24 years and I'm still trying to work through it. I'm still trying to help that little Naomi who comes out boxing sometimes that wants to protect me. And he allows me that space to do that. And, and I think in a lot of marriages, people get tired of that working that hard. Mm -hmm. Well, and you said, you know, he allows you that space and, and just think about, I think about there's, there's a lot of things about myself that I'll. I'll reflect back on and be like, God, I wish I could change that about myself, you know? And, but you know, I have to allow myself that space because I'm all I've got. Mm -hmm. Um, but you also have to allow other people that space because they're human, mm -hmm. you know? So it's really easy to get caught up in the moment and the passion and the anger. Um, 
and, you know, to react. And, you know, sometimes I do react and I'm sure I know you, you know, you do as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but to forgive. And one thing that Jonathan and I talk about a lot, um, or recognize a lot, um, is we, yeah, we get angry at each other. There are things about each other that, you know, bug, bug each of us. Um, and we don't always talk about those things. We vent to our friends sometimes about mm-hmm. those things. And we realize that I know he talks to his friends about me and mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs an outlet. Yeah. Um, but what we never do is put each other down to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I never, you know, will say, you know, he's such an asshole or, you yeah. know, yeah. I'm an asshole sometimes, yeah. you know, yeah. um, but we never put each other down, um, to other people in front of other people. Mm-hmm. That is one of, uh, God, I hate when people do that. Um, when you're in a group of people and one person puts an, another person down mm-hmm. in front of their spouse, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, and I, I can think of a, you know, a million different scenarios where that's happened, but, um, we're very conscious not to do that because, um, once you start disrespecting, um, the person you're supposed to love the most in life, it's really hard to get that back, that, that level of relationship and trust back. Um, no, I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, you know, you talk about the person you're supposed to love the most in your life. And there's so much packed into that statement, right? And when you're talking so poorly about the person you love the most, could be yourself, could be your Mm -hmm. husband, could be your kids, right? And that showcases too, maybe that's part of it, is maybe maybe there's those of us who work really hard not to talk that poorly about ourselves, about our kids and our husband. I wonder if, you know, the people that do that also talk that poorly about themselves, maybe about their kids. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a learned communication piece Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's it's a common thing in Mm -hmm. who they are. We talk about that. That's something that, you know, you learn in therapy, to be quite honest that communication piece and why you talk so poorly about the people in your life. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? So what do people tell you about you and Jonathan? Like what are the, so there's a couple things um, that come to mind that are very different about us than most married couples. Um, when we first were engaged, um, Yeah, when we first were engaged, we we flew back to Minnesota for an engagement party with all of our old friends and family. I say old because we had lived in Colorado for a few years, um, and then we went back to Minnesota for our engagement party. Um, And we were all sitting around, and we're like, you know, what? Asked our friends and family, and you know, those that have been married for a long time around us, what if you have words of advice to give? What would that be? And something that always stuck with both of us is my mom said, you've already done it. And we're like, what? And she said, you moved away from your family, which for my mom to say that we crushed her when we moved across the country. She didn't talk to us for, you know, a good month or two. Like she was so angry with Jonathan um, because, you know, in her eyes or her mind, he, he took me away, you know? Yeah. And, um, and then she said that and she said, you moved away from your family. You moved away from everything comfortable that you knew and your support system. And it forced you to create that support, support system and a new life with each other. Wow. So you don't have that crutch, which she's absolutely right. And I'm not saying everybody needs to move yeah. away from their family, yeah. but, um, that we, so we, when we moved here, we moved here with a, a tiny bit of money and not enough to find, not enough to have a place to live. Um, we kind of camped out on couches for the first year. That's why I met That's you. That's when we met, right? Because you were I, eating top ramen. Yeah. And... I eventually got 
a, a, a temp job, I think, yeah. at the company you were working for. And then you eventually hired me as a leasing agent. And the only reason I went that route, because that's not my background, um, is so we could potentially have a place to live. Yeah. And so, you know, we got a half price apartment or whatever for a while. And we were, yeah, we not only were we eating top ramen, but we were, I would go to big lots where it was expired food. Yeah. Because yep. it was cheaper there. Yeah. I and remember so, that. I remember you would tell me all of that. So we, we moved with next to nothing and all like literally all we had was each other and our vehicles that we drove here in. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we reflect back on that time and it's so, it, not only did we grow together to what we are now, but it's also something we can reflect back on in our own lives when things seem bad now. Like if, you know, if we have a hard time financially now or, um, you know, just things aren't going right, we can always reflect back on that time, that top ramen, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Could be worse. It could be worse. It could be worse. So that... You know, that's that's one thing is um, we made it a giant move where we only had each other to depend on. And then um, the other kind of peculiar thing um, that my parents told us or recommended is that we have separate bank accounts. Um, and this is because, and I remember this as a child, um, to avoid fighting over financial matters. Um, I remember my parents would they fought a lot when I was little. Um, and they're still married. Um, they're a great couple. Good for you. They've been Good married for, for a long time. Um, and I remember them fighting a lot when I was little and, uh, it was all over stupid financial stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if my dad went and bought like, you know, some piece, some tool that my mom thought, you know, he didn't need and spent X amount of dollars and, or she went and got her hair done and he thought it was mm -hmm. too much to spend on your hair things like that, um, they'd have these, these fights that obviously took a toll on their marriage at that time. And, um, and then they eventually separated their bank accounts and that, that piece of their marriage went away. They were no longer fighting mm. about financial strife. A lot of people get divorced at that time. Yeah. When that right. happens. So, um, their suggestion is to start right out the gates with separate bank accounts. And we did, um, and you know, our names are on each other's accounts. So if something were to happen or, you know, we, we transfer money back and forth, things like that. Our, our jobs are quite different than most, um, we're both real estate agents. And so we don't have a steady income. So we have to transfer money back and forth, but, um, we've never fought about financial crap like that. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. So those are a couple of different, um, I guess, unique uh, parts to our relationship or aspects of our relationship that make us a little bit different than yeah. your typical American couple. Yeah. I um, I look at, I look, so part of the relationship I have with Richard is that we're both divorced. So we brought in children from another marriage mm -hmm. and so many marriages I've seen with, um, stepchildren don't make it. And where we found success was from the very beginning, um, I told Richard, your kids come first to you. My kid comes first to me. If we ever make the other person choose, it's over. Mm -hmm. And we really sat down and talked about parenting the other person's children. And when you go into parenting somebody else's child, there's so many things that are involved that you have no control over. And most step parents want control. Mm -hmm. It's my house. I pay the mortgage. It's my car. I pay the car payment. They're my groceries. I go buy the groceries. And when you're a step parent, that's all true. And when you try to have control over somebody else's child, you're going to lose every day because it's not just your husband or wife's child. It's also somebody else's, their ex's. Right. And as a stepchild myself, I already had an awakening of what that felt like being on the receiving end. 
mm-hmm. of having a step dick and a step bitch. And I, <laughs> um, uh, I know that's how I call them. Um, and I knew I didn't want to be that. You don't want to be a step bitch. No, I do not. <laughs> no, I do not. And I, so we talked about that. And I think that was a really healthy part of our relationship. And don't get me wrong. We fought about each other's kids and, um, you know, but we always, always made sure that the parent of that child had the last say Mm -hmm. and that we had to put our ego aside and we had to put our feelings aside and it wasn't about us. Mm -hmm. And so many times when you decide to fall in love with somebody, you don't fall in love with their kids. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you fall in love with that person. And then the kids are like, Oh yeah. And you've got three kids. Mm -hmm. Instead we went in saying, okay, I'm in love with you. And before we commit to each other, Let's make sure we really talk about the kid factor. Mm-hmm. Let's really make sure that we understand what the rules are behind this because we are not going to drag these kids through our mess. Mm-hmm. It's always an afterthought. Not always. I generalize. Sorry, guys. At times, it's an afterthought. Mm-hmm. And my husband is not a stepchild. His parents were together until his dad passed. Um, so he didn't understand the whole step parent thing. So if you if you've never been a stepchild then it is hard to understand mm-hmm. right and for those of you who are in a relationship and you don't have kids and you are a step parent that's hard because you don't understand unconditional love i'm going to give you an example so my one of my stepsons we were in the living room and he came and we were just watching tv and he came and punched me right in the face and he had to have been like <laughs> nine or 10. And I looked at him and I was like, what'd you do that for? He goes, cause my mom told me to, she doesn't like you. And I said, okay, sat there. My husband was pissed. And I'm <laughs> like, no, don't get mad because he's protecting his mom. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know what to do. And when I tell this story, put my daughter's face on him. Mm-hmm. If she's upset and she punches me in the face, and I say, Desiree, what'd you do that for? That freaking hurt. Go to your room. Blah, blah, blah. What's bad? And she goes, but mommy, I'm sorry. I love you. I'm just really hurting because I miss my dad. I'm like, oh, baby, I love you so much. It's okay. You didn't mean to hurt me. You didn't mean to punch me in the face. Mm-hmm. We don't have that same reaction to a stepchild. Mm-hmm. That unconditional love where you forgive your child for doing something that hurts you. Are you going to forgive your stepchild for the same thing. So as you're working through your relationship with your spouse and you both bring in kids, that is a relationship that really, really has to be, um, uh, founded on true understanding that you're not just between you and your husband, you have other things coming in. And if you don't have children and you don't understand that unconditional love that you have for your kids, that you will forgive them for an, doing something that really, really hurt you, Mm -hmm. it's hard to, it's hard to be that. So I think, you know, as a marriage, you have to be okay with that part of being, if you have step kids. So for Rich and I, our marriage has lasted because we did. Mm -hmm. And we made sure that we respected the other person's children Mm -hmm. through our marriage and didn't let our ego and our own needs and desires come before that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and your marriage is interesting too because um, you guys got together when you were with other people. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, most people would think that's a rebound relationship that's mm-hmm. not going to last. Everybody thought that. Yeah, and here you are. I mean, yeah, you've had your, your trials and tribulations and mm-hmm. you talk about, you know, you talk about how Rich cheated on you and you have, a, you know, stepchildren and all that goes with that. But um, have, knowing both of you and... You know, typically, like when you're when you're, your girlfriend says, you know, my husband cheated on you, you're like, I hate that person. Like he's a, a dick. Like you yeah. know, ick. Like even if they stay together, you're just like, ah. But Rich is like, you're both just such amazing people. Like mm-hmm. you know, so like you know, we all uh, we're not we're not perfect, and you know, forgiving people for their faults and their mistakes. Mm-hmm. Um, is all part of life and it's all part of, we talked about this before, it's all part of growing. Um, and probably you guys are stronger in your marriage 
because of that. And we're honest with mistake. our kids. We're uh-huh. honest with our kids about our marriage. They know about the mm-hmm. cheating. They know about the times we've almost got divorced. And our adult children confide in us about their own relationship problems. Mm-hmm. And because we're honest about our relationship and that it's not perfect. Because I was not what was shown to me as mm-hmm. a child. And I thought a marriage I w- was supposed to be perfect with no drama, with no mm-hmm. issues. And, and you know, being honest about your relationship to your friends, to your family, to your children is, to me, is so gratifying because it is okay knowing that it's not going every day is not going to be blissful and mm-hmm. at a 10 all the time. Mm-hmm. And if we can, the reality is, you know, how hard it is to be friends with somebody for 24 years, mm-hmm. just a girlfriend, mm-hmm. right? H- imagine trying to be in love with somebody for 24 years and always being accepting of everything and then being accepting of you. It's a tough fucking relationship man <laughs> and if if we were just all honest about it mm-hmm. then we could all sit at a table and be like yes we're flawed and i would rather be flawed with you mm-hmm. than the next dipshit mm-hmm. who i have to refigure out who you are at least yeah. i've gotten to a place i at least know where you've been for the last 24 years and i right. can well and like in those times where those difficult times where like you you know almost like hate each other you know mm-hmm. we always go through those times where you're just like ah i just wish you'd go for away for a while yeah um you think you know you think about like you know if i were to get into another relationship yes i'd have that butterflies and not this you know it'd be so wonderful and then you're like well every relationship goes through that and then you go through your trials and tribulations and so do i really want to start all of that over and again? then at our age girl <laughs> I'm 47. Do you know how much baggage a dude's going to have for the last 47 years that I'm going to have to deal with? Yeah. Like, well, and the reality is, like, when that hits me or when it hits Jonathan, we both, I mean, we both know, yeah, it's, it could be, like, a shitty week or two weeks or even a shitty four months, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. this too shall pass. Like, yeah. it always passes yeah. because that that's just part of life. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it can't all be butterflies and roses and rainbows because if you didn't have the rock bottoms the butterflies and rainbows and roses wouldn't feel so good you need that you know that comparison and um and getting through those times just makes you stronger um but i guess that's my outlook on on our marriage i don't want to project that on anyone else because there there are definitely relationships out there that um that you know are not the best and need yeah. need to end. And <laughs> well, and I think that there's a, the honest truth. I think some marriages too are there financially, because you know they're friends mm-hmm. and financially they need each other, and that's okay. Right. I think as long as you're honest with why you're why you're with the person, right, and you guys are honest with each other about why you're together, it's nobody else's business. It's nobody else's business, and mm-hmm. I we try we try to make it our business because that person may be unhappy, mm-hmm. but or we make it our business because it makes us feel better about ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, you know, shoot, we got another 50 years to go, girl. That's a lot of time. Look, and our, our relation, my relationship with Richard is going to change. Right. Again and again and again and again. And I have to be okay with that. Right? And that you just settle in. For right. me, you know, that's what I look at. I'm like, this is not going to be the last time. That Rich is going to throw something at me that he's going to want something different and I'm going to throw something at him that I'm going to want something different. Mm -hmm. And we have to, we have to settle in and know that today is not going to be the same 10 years from now. Right. And that's it. That's all I got for you, sister. That's all you got. That was awesome. That was good. Hey, good good job. All right. All right. Thanks y'all. We'll talk to you next time. Next time. Bye. Bye.